any amount. <laughs> like, there's a physical size limit, right. obviously, but the magnitude of the output, there's no limitation. Okay. Are they gone? We forgot his stuff. I'll be seeing her. So yeah, there's so that, that right there is just sort of your initial prototype, easy to yeah. assemble with the with the plexiglass where you can insert. Well, this is just a visual. This, right? this is for people to come and see. So an electri an electrical engineer when he comes, or a mechanical engineer, they want to be able to see everything and trace the wires and you know yeah. make sure that we're not. Fooling them, that's why everything's labeled and the wires are. And that's also why there's only three coils in use, because you only need three coils to, to demonstrate the effect. If we had 12 coils on there, it gets a little bit more, you know, uh, it gets harder for an engineer if he wants to see where the connections go in the battery. Engineers could engineers ought to be uh, ought to have ought to do more due diligence than let's say you guys would, and that's where Paul and Dr. Sab would come in. Like if they if they couldn't spot an error or a problem or whatever, if they could have, you wouldn't be here. Um, and um, so are you still connected to the grid here? Yeah. Like, so, <laughs> yeah. question: uh, Why would you be powering your house with this now? Is it simply a lack of being able well, to get it to that point? No. It seems like it should be scalable. If you can get to fifteen kW, right? Like I, I power my house. I'm out in the country, so we have power outages, right? Yeah. Storms, yeah. whatever. So yeah. I've got eleven kilowatt yeah. generator outside yeah. that I go and flip the switch. Yeah. I'm thinking in those terms, and I know they're simple, but yeah. Is it not? So, is it not? No, the, 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 only, the only thing that you would get if you switched out the generator with this is, so I, I lived off the grid as well and I had a gas generator. So when you turn on the, when you turn on the gas motor, when you start it, uh, the gas motor is running the generator at idle. Yeah. And then you, there's a switch that you press that starts sending power, right? As soon as you do that, the gas motor starts consuming a lot more power, it speeds up. Okay, so if you had a Regen X generator there, the, the fuel consumption by the gas motor at idle is the maximum amount that you would ever require. Right. That's okay, right. that's it. It would actually go down when you're generating electricity. Right, because so then it start creating a bank, right? Or the, the, the generator would when it's on low, when it's charging the batteries, would make the gas motor turn faster. So the gas motor <coughs> would require less fuel. So that's not perpetual motion in that sense. No, I understand. But, but you've already gained a, a huge amount of efficiency. You, yeah. Your generator is now operating at infinite efficiency. That just means that the gas motor doesn't need to add any more, doesn't need to consume any more gas to add more mechanical uh, power to the dry shot. That's all it means. So, um, so theoretically, you could have batteries there and it would. Sure, I could have a battery backup that would first kick off that motor, right? To get the generator going. Well, the pro right? Yeah, the, the problem with electric motors is that, yeah. Fast. Getting it, yeah, getting, going down the perpetual motion route is, it's tricky. Yeah, yeah. You can, you can. Our you, thing is, what's the most efficient way to use this in a home situation as a backup system? And then it actually becomes your generating system in, so that I can go. Yeah, in a, tell, in, you know, I don't wanna, in a home, yeah. in a home, uh, you can take a 10 kilowatt home generator, okay? Take out the generator, put in a regenerate generator. Now your motor is just idling. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, Starting this is the inertia, right? Yeah. So, 
so that means there's, you know, it's the inertia of the vehicle that's driving the generator. But in a, any other system, you have to you have to have it idling, okay? And in a diesel gen set, like a or natural gas ones, um, you need about twenty percent of your total consumption is required at idle, and then you need an additional eighty percent when you're generating. Right, because that's when it draws down. Yeah, and then you'll. So you what you would end up with is you would end up with you would generate electricity from your home, but your consumption would be eighty percent. And that's not perpetual motion or whatever. You can, you can get away with it in a vehicle because a 2,000 pound vehicle traveling at 100 kilometers an hour is producing, producing a lot of torque that can drive you know, a pretty big generator. So you need a certain amount of power to, to get the system idling. But in an EV, um, the nice thing is, is that the generator is a motor initially to help propel the EV up to speed. And then once it's up to speed, if you have two motors in your EV, you only need one motor to, to maintain your speed and you can use the generator to generate right. as so, much power as you like. And that's what I meant, I guess that's what I was trying to say at home. So I could get an electric motor that starts off with power, either by a battery bank or something, right, to get it up to idle speed, that then kickstarts the generator, that that would then fill up that battery bank again, or? If you notice here, yeah. okay, you notice that the prime the motor was using like 150 watts at idle, mm -hmm. okay, and we were delivering 10 watts. The, the power in the drive shaft was zero, but the prime mover was using 150 watts. Okay? Now, if you want to do what you're saying, you have to you have to produce 10 watts, like that's for your house, plus you have to produce 150 watts, which is your requirement to get it started. Do you follow what I'm do you get what I'm saying? And that's a challenge. What I'm saying is because you don't want to, if you can get away, what, or how can you get a prime mover that's not polluting um, for a home system? That's okay. Other so than putting it on a motorbike or wind a car. Wind turbine. Okay. So a wind turbine, you guys drive by the big we wind turbine. Right? Yeah, that's polluting our whole countryside. Okay. I hate so it because they produce less in their whole lifetime than the carbon footprint that they produce by making them. Anyway. Okay. So a wind turbine is the size that it is yeah. because of generator armature reaction. Mm -hmm. The blades have to be so big yeah. because they have to capture all that wind to turn the generator. Because the, gener the, 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 the blades are turning this way, the generator is trying to turn the opposite direction. So um, if, you have, if you replace all those wind turbine generators with Regen X generators, now the generator is turning in the same direction as the blades, okay? So now the blades can be 80% smaller. Now you can have urban, term, urban wind turbines on your roof that produce all the power for your house. A 10 kilowatt urban wind turbine in your uh, for your house would be, wouldn't be much bigger than this. Like the, the it would be, be really small. So I guess you could create a prime mover by simply plugging into the power that's coming into your property to create. Is Again, that... the problem is that it's it's inefficient to use electric power to create mechanical power. Okay, I see. Yes. Okay, um, and again, you can get away with it. You can get away with it with the with the with the EV because you're you're not using you're using stored inertia. So that component that yeah. Okay. So um, again, it takes whatever you whatever you need at idle to give you your your a 
additional uh, idling speed input. Uh, again, the electric motor is not the best thing for that. So, 